masculinities are multiple, they are fluid and they're dynamic. So the concept allows for change and it assigns agency to men to negotiate this change. I want to ask you whether this privilege that patriarchy and masculinity gives men was obvious to you in your life at any point. Well, the one thing that I that was very, very obvious to me would be salary. I get paid more than women doing exactly the same job and somehow I'm being perceived as being more capable and more reliable simply because I'm a man. Well, I think oftentimes we forget that masculinity also is something that appears and manifests through the, the body, like the physical body, right? And this idea that I guess, you know, to defend one's country also means one must have a very specific kind of body. And I think growing up, there was a lot of anxieties with um, how I looked physically, the kind of body that I wanted. I, I was overweight for a while and, you know, and, 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 and kind of what that meant, you know, I wasn't necessarily then fitting the social script, right? Patriarchy obviously privileges a very certain form of men, right? Um, and this is where we can bring in things like, um, um, you know, obviously queer men, trans men, um, you know, um, ableism and things like that all fit, all come into, come into this picture. But for transgender men, um, what I tend to experience quite a lot of also is that when going through that, that, that transition phase, um, men, these young men also then try to concord themselves to fit into a box. And so we see high levels then of these ideas of toxic masculinity among some of these individuals as well. You know, wanting to then um, be seen by society as men. There's a lot of traditional expectations about how men should behave. You know, that used to tell me, um, boys don't cry. You know, in, in Chinese, you know, kind of um, ideology that was ingrained to us. And that sort of um, brought me up as well in terms of that ideology. I, I sort of believe in that as well. And before I delve into gender studies, I was actually um, pretty much um, reinforcing that kind of um, ideology. A lot of our learning has been through conversations that we've had with, with different people. Um, you know, if you can find a safe space or just a group of, of, of friends or your family members or whoever that you think you can ask questions about who are willing to, to, to answer and willing to share maybe their own personal stories with you, um, you know, um, do that. Obviously, I think with the caveat that like, don't be like, hey, come tell me everything, right? I think, you know, like, um, um, like making sure that you're, you're asking for, for their content. It's good to be emotional. It's good to cry when I watch sad movies. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that helps me in terms of achieving a balance. Is it counterproductive to involve men in the fight for women's rights? Men are part of the issues when you talk about masculinity, even when you talk about things like domestic violence, etc., we always think about them as women's issues. But in reality, men are very much part of the issues as well. So why are we excluding ourselves from these conversations when we should really be part of it and we should be having these talks about, you know, I, I don't want to say that I, I know what I'm doing, but I'm standing here and trying to be brave and trying to have this conversation because I know that it's important. I have some friends who would say, no, this is another bunch of family speaking, no, let's not listen to them because they are all just about a bra burning and, and men bashing. If there's other men who can reach out to them and showing them that there are alternative ways of being a man, then I think it's, it may be better. And that's how we can try to achieve equity. And I think that's what I would encourage to stand up and to challenge, not just to accept and just ask, why did you say that? It's always worth checking in to see whether or not this allyship, I suppose, um, is self-serving. I think we've seen also that performing like wokeness or being the woke boy, I think like can gain you like a lot of capital, right? And, and, and I think a lot of men recognize that um, and use it in incredibly toxic ways and predatory ways also. And where I think then men fit in is, is, is learning more about survivor support, learning more about that kind, that kind of like labor, that kind of care work that I think a lot of men already don't necessarily perform, right?